All right, we have. All right, we have quite a full house of grass. All right, good evening, dear parents. Let's turn down the music. Apologize for the break in transmission. All right. Good evening, our lovely parents. Uh, we are about to commence the meeting. We're just making sure as many people start with us as possible. Good evening, Mrs. Ogunleye. Good evening. Right. Good, Good evening. evening. And Miss, Mrs. Kemi, uh, I would love if we can uh, change the names a bit to include our last names so that we can be able to identify ourselves easily. Good evening. I'm um, Samsung. Good evening, Ms. Mr. Saleh, our honorable guest speaker is here. So we're just handling some, we're going to begin in a few short minutes. Uh, I hope we've had a long and a restful holiday, our students as well. So just take some time to get familiar with the interface. Uh, as well. Okay. All right. Um, So today we are discussing on building character. Thank 
Keep that bread. Chop up. Nobody eats. Okay. Can we hear now? Okay, I'm just uh, being informed that, can we hear us now? Okay. Oh, I'm really sorry about that. I really, uh, as I really thought we could hear at the beginning. So, all right, great, great. Thank you for that. Okay, so I just led a short prayer for the meeting to go well. And um, that is how we commenced. Now we are in the, um, I'm, and I've actually welcomed uh, several of us here. So I'm really thankful to Miss Kemi, Mrs. Kemi for joining us. And very soon you will introduce us as uh, with your child's name. Are you the mom or auntie um, of, uh, you are the mom or auntie of, please introduce yourself. All parents in the house, kindly introduce yourselves because we have started now. Okay. All right. So while we are doing that, you can just use the chat option to write your names and your child's name as well. We said that we are to connect our audio using the join audio button, and then you click on Wi-Fi or cellular. And then we said we are to mute our mics when we are not speaking. So this is the mute button. When it is read and crossed out, it means nobody can hear you. But when it is um, colored, 
when it is um, not read, rather, it means, well, that we can hear you. We're going over the rules. If you're just joining us, thank you for joining us for the seminar today. The next etiquette is if you have something to say, please raise your hand. The raise hand button is available under the reactions so that we can move onwards. All right. All right, so mommy. Okay, Ogolu Akiton's mom. Oh, lovely. So please introduce yourselves in the chat. I have Mrs. Ngozi Honor. It's so nice having you on the platform this evening, Ma. How are you today? Can you hear me? Okay. Just go ahead and introduce yourselves in the chat quickly. Okay. And next, uh, we don't have to show our videos if we're not comfortable. You don't have to show your video to be a part of the meeting. But of course, it's always nice to see our lovely mommies and daddies in person. So feel free to show your video as well. To share your video as well. Okay. Um, all right. And then the fifth rule is to listen and be focused. Stay focused. It's easy to get distracted in a Zoom meeting, but let's just try and stay focused. Okay. And um, finally, let's be respectful and kind in sharing our views. All right. Good evening, dear mommy. So if we understand all that we have shared so far, please, um, if you understand what we have shared so far regarding the rules and regulation, uh, please raise your hand. You can do that under the reactions tab. Okay. Okay. All right. We are we are getting introduced um, in the chats. Please, if you're just joining the meeting, kindly um, put your name and your child's name in the chat so we can easily identify you. Okay, so these are the rules of the meeting. We'll be referring to them shortly. Okay, so just a brief introduction to Top Flight College, a reintroduction to Top Flight College. We are a lovely school that has been around for over 20 years and uh, our students, our alumni, they are doing well all over the world by the grace of God. Um, we nurture our students in a vibrant environment, um, with lots of leadership and genius potentials being unlocked, we like to say. And that is our main goal, one of our main goals anyway. So, um, All right, so um, Ms. Bimbo Oguleye, can you confirm if this sound is reaching out to you? Oh, great, great, great. Okay, someone just did that. Okay, so we have just discussed what Top Flight is all about, 20 years now, and the and we have a you know, wide range of subjects, things that make us distinct and unique in our school. But I really want to go over to why we are here. Why was this online meeting called? Why is it necessary? Why are we going in this direction? Well, because we have a mission and we have a vision and we are really trying to connect with it 
on a deeper level this term. So um, we are aware of what is happening in society today on our platforms. We see messages of how things are going and we really want to oh. charge. rather than complain about the situation of the nation or the way people conduct themselves, why don't we um, harness, combine our efforts really as parents and as a school to bring out some potentials from these children. So our mission at Top Flight College remains, one of our missions, uh, the, the goal broken down, the mission statement broken down, remains that we want to raise highly intelligent students who are righteous and independent and poised and confident. So we want to make sure that our children stand out for all these wonderful things. You are welcome if you're just joining the meeting. I have Mrs. Adeleke in the house and our, our wonderful mommies and daddies. So while we are calling this meeting, I want to probably in the future be going in line with forums like this is so that we can work together to achieve our goal regarding our children and regarding our students. Also, we want to harness, one, one of our missions is to harness a well-developed teaching and learning curriculum that imparts knowledge and competency skills for the 21st century. So there's a knowledge gap now in the world, in the global market, where people are learning things that are not really preparing them for the future. But at Top Flight College, we want to make sure that we are not a statistic, that our students are learning high quality um, skills. That's why we have the coding and robotics classes and the eloquence classes, the Chinese language, in addition to their regular subjects. So we are really pursuing having a well-developed learning curriculum. And th that's one of the visions of the school and the mission that we are already working on. And finally, or thirdly rather, we are trying to build a team of educators, okay? A team of educators that are growth conscious. Yeah. I know this seems a bit redundant, but it's important that we clearly state why we are here and why Top Flight exists, our why. This is our why. To make people growth conscious and self-actualized, actually. So, um, and of course, to achieve outstanding performances in both academic and non-academic fields. So that's enough about that. This is about our school's um, mission and vision. So um, here we now um, want to be known globally for this actually. But why we are here today, let's introduce our guest speaker as well. So fun fact, um, I met with Uncle Sele. He's known as Uncle Sele. That's his name, actually. I got some questions. That, ah, what is his full name? Well, that's his uh, um, official name. And you can check him all over the internet, doing great things for young people. So we met at a conference, at an educational conference last year. And his presentation really moved me. And really, um, that's why I, we invited him over here so that we as parents can also get some equipping. We're doing our best, definitely. And we are awesome parents. If you are an awesome parent, I want you to um, you know, put it out there in the chat. Raise your hand. You can use the reactions to raise your hand. So I'm an awesome parent, so I will raise my hand as well. Okay, yes, I'll do that. So we are doing our best, but apparently the world is changing very quickly. And it's, oh yes, I can see some awesome parents as well raising their hands. Yes, you are, that's it, because you are doing your very best. So we understand that the world is changing now very fast. Technology is taking over and a lot of our children need to, need, in fact, now it's no longer the way our parents trained us that we will walk. 
if your parents trained you a certain mm -hmm. way, and of course, you are here today, that means they did a great job. At some point, the way we are going to communicate with this next generation is going to need a bit of coaching. I'm telling you, they need mm -hmm. us to be a bit more equipped for them so that we are not missing red flags and so that we are able to make them happy and healthy adults. So, of course, that is the goal. So that's why we are going into having these training sessions for parents and teachers as well. So we've been having this sort of forum for our teachers um, over the year. I think we've had like two of this year alone with the teachers. But we just want to bring in you, our wonderful parents, into the training sessions so that um, you are more aware of certain things as well. So I will just um, quickly introduce Uncle Sele. Uncle Sele is a seasoned speaker on the subject of values transfer and sound refocusing in the society. With over seven years of experience in the field and several training courses for kids and parents, he is the founder of Trees mm -hmm. and Pillars Online School and the ambassador for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So he is mm -hmm. all of that. And of course, he's a okay. children's coach mm -hmm. and a mentor that has mm -hmm. helped parents and children of all yeah. ages to achieve harmonious mind mm -hmm. transformation. Mm -hmm. He's happily married with three kids. Uncle Sele. Can we get to meet you? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good mm -hmm. evening. I'm so happy mm -hmm. to be here. So mm -hmm. um, oh, Mrs. Mm -hmm. um, Mrs. Deboy is raising her hand. I don't know if she wants to say something. Yeah. Oh, I guess mm -hmm. an awesome parent. Our awesome parents were raising their hands. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. That's fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay. Okay. So, um, so could you help me tell uh, parents to mute so okay. that um, okay. I'll, 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 yeah, I'll just do that from here. Any parent that is um that there's noise in the background, you can just mute. But you're welcome, okay. all our wonderful parents. So, Uncle Sela, it's so great having you. Thank you for joining us for our very first online parents seminar so since covid during COVID, oh yeah yes during covid that this was the norm but uh we just decided to revamp it as a school management so we can partner with our parents better communication uh so that the communication lines are open okay uncle Sele, we'll be handing over to you shortly um but i just want to just um show some of the works that uncle Sele has done in the past so we have Uncle Sele as the International um, World Values Day Ambassador. So that is a big deal. Congratulations, sir. I think that's awesome. And of Thank course, you. Um, um, you are the, um, the one of the um, invited guests on TVC. You're usually on TVC for parental you know, um, coaching as well. Oh, yes, TVC. Yes, of course, yes, and we can see you doing some other works with children as well, and just the coaching aspect. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, because of our time, we want to ensure we are very timely. We'll give it over okay. to you. And just All enlighten right. us, what are values? and Why are they important to us? Okay, How can All right, we, no problem. Yeah, grow our value <laughs> system. You. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Serpis, can I can I um share my screen now? Okay, okay. So I will I will do that. Good evening, daddies and mommies. It's it's so it's so wonderful to be here. I'm excited. Um, just finished. We just finished um a three-day men's conference. I go home today and I had to prepare for this. And I'm excited to be here because um, this wonderful assignment that I've been given, you know, to coach 
you know, um, children also get to talk to parents um, is is a very is is very important and it's dear to me and I know it's dear to God. So every time I have an opportunity to talk to parents, I'm always very excited. I'm very very willing, you know, um, to give my time. Okay, so um, well, okay, so let me find out if I can share. Okay, so I can share my screen now. All right. So please, if you can see my screen, can you uh, give me a thumbs up? Someone humming. Can you hear someone humming? Okay, so building strong character and values in children. Wow. Okay, so I like to start with this. How many? How many of us? You know, I always very, very upset with the kind of things that we see, you know, in our society, you know, the things that are going on. How many of us just wish that something could be done and, you know, uh, wish that children can make better decisions and things like that? Uh, please, I also love us to use uh, um, the, chat, the chat box so that we can, you know, communicate and, you know, we can be very interactive. So... We live in a society where we see a whole lot of things, you know, a whole lot of biases and things like that. And um, I think um, it, it's a it cause for worry, actually. And let me tell you a story. Last, um, this month, I had a training and I had a coaching session with, you know, children, um, children age, you know, um, eight to 12. And I asked them this simple question. And I said, is it easy to make the right decision? Is it easy? And they all said no. And I said, wow. I said, why, why, why is it, why is this so? Why is it very hard? Why is it very hard, you know, to make the right decision? And they said this, they said, because everywhere they go, everywhere they see people making the wrong decisions. They see a whole lot of you know, people making decisions based on vices at home, you know, in school, you know, in the estate and things like that. And for them, it made me sad a bit, but you know, I, I, we, we had to talk about the whole, we had to talk to them, I had to talk to them about you know, making sound decisions and understanding the fact that they are not abnormal, you know, and make them understand that they are normal if they make the right decisions. Because the children were growing now, a whole lot of them are beginning to think that when they make the right decisions, they are not normal because people laugh at them and they try to do things right. People, people, people look at them and, you know, call them names because they are doing the right things. Now, this, this brings us to this question. What are we doing at home? So we're going to talk about building strong character and values in children. So I'm going to use my slide and let's do this. Okay, so um, I was already introduced, but quickly, let me tell you who I am. I'm a mentor, I'm a model, I'm a global speaker and values coach, I'm a parenting expert, I'm a World Values Day School Ambassador for Nigeria. I'm a father of nations. I also run the foundation for children in underserved communities. Now, this is me. This is me. Okay, so um, <laughs> when I say I'm a father of nations, you know, um, I also do something called, you know, surrogate dad, where I get to stand in, you know, as a father to, you know, to children or to, um, seeing children with single parents and things like How that. Are you? So, do you understand? So that's what that's what surrogate dad is called. Okay, so let's go. Main points: we'll talk about character, we'll talk about values, we'll talk about the roles of parents, and we will talk about the child approach. Um, parents, please, could you help us mute mute so that um there are no distractions, please? Okay, so. Okay, Please, I'll... can you mute? Thank you. Okay, so now in our world today, I'm gonna to, I'm gonna read out a list of things that we see every time. 
Now, the first thing we are seeing is we're seeing a whole lot of people, children, you know, without self-control. Also buy water. Sea water and pure water. Let me carry one. Yeah, so, let me see. Sorry, hold on. Please now. <laughs> uh, Mr. Solomon, please can you mute? <laughs> Okay. Thank you. All right. So, sorry about that. Sorry about that. I'm sure he's not aware. So please, let's forgive him. All right. So the things we see in our society, we see a lot of people without self-control. Um, we see people in, in, indulging, you know, harmful behavior or habits. We see a lot of um, people who don't love good. So you see people who want to cheat you and feel it's okay. So let me give you an example. The, the, the men's hangout that we had was for four days. So we paid for, you know, this Airbnb where, you know, you can just go, there's lights, there's water and everything like that. Now, so after paying close to 1 million for four days, we get to this place and there is no lights. There is no light. There is, you know, it is, it, it's, it's, look, we paid for 24 hours. You pay for everything because that's what you said you have. That's what you said you want to do. But you see, now we are here. There is no light. You know, every time we reach out to you, we are complaining. You are saying, please give us one minute. We are bringing the gen. But you see something. That is, you know, a person who wants to cheat someone out of their money. And they feel it's okay. Because what you said you're going to do, you're not doing it. But guess what? You're collecting from people. So we had to move to another place. So imagine, spent over one million. We've not even lasted one day, and we had to move somewhere else. And when we asked, is there going to be refund? This they're, they're, they're thinking, that, oh, what, what are we going to do? That's a lack. Lack of character. Do you understand? Lack of character. And we have th those things. We see these things every time. People do these oh. things and it is very, very okay. Do you understand? We see people who are very proud. People steal. People who don't respect their parents. Yes. People who just love pleasure. People who, you know, who just think that doing things based on vices are okay. And the question is, if it's done every time in the society, it means that there is a problem from where that person came from. It means that there is a problem from the home. Because everything starts from the home. Because everything starts from the home. We have parents there, we have fathers, we have mothers, and the thing is, we have children who leave our homes. And when they go out, they do things that they think is okay. Now, I always say this thing. People make decisions based on values or vices. People make decisions based on values or vices. Now, what is important to you? Do you understand? And when you begin to make those decisions, how do you feel? All right, so I, I believe that you're going to learn something from what we will talk about today. Okay, so... Um, I saw this quote, so I just wanted to put it out there. So the attitude you have as a parent is what your children will learn. They don't remember what you try to teach. They remember who you are. They remember who you are. They remember who you are. How is daddy? How is mommy? How is daddy? How is mommy? Every, every character daddy and mommy has is what... They, they they assume. So I always say that your child will be the advanced version of you. So I always like to say things, you know, things like um, if you're very good with phones and things like that, I always say uh, you are the pro max of your father or you're the pro max of your mother. It means that you look like your mother, you act like your father or things like that. You're always the advanced version. So it means that if as a person you, you, you steal as a father or as a mother, you steal. Your children see you, they know that you steal. What you're growing is an advanced person 
who will do more harm when it comes to stealing. So they will learn from you. So it means that everything first starts from the person that's in the house. That's in the house. That father, that mother. When you when you see, when you take your child to school, that child comes with a certain behavior. The child that that teacher is seeing, because one or another set of people that influence children are teachers. But the first influence are parents. So let me not run ahead of myself. So let's just follow the slide. Okay. So let's talk about art and move this. Now, every day we see people acting. So character, character refers to the moral and ethical qualities that defines a person's identity and gui guide their behavior, their actions. So I always like to ask a question. Who are you? As a father, who are you? As a mother, who are you? What are the things that, what are the things that define you? What are the qualities that define you as a person? Who are you? Who are you? In mango, there are seeds. And that seed is called a mango seed. So when you plant it, when it grows, it, you see mango. Do you understand? Who are you? That's one thing you need to ask yourself. Who are you? Do you know who you are? Do you know that for everything that you do, your children see, your children understand, your children, they absorb do you know? Because I always find out that most times parents don't really know that they are the ones that transfer the behavior to their children because your children see you every time. When you shout a whole lot at home, when your children begin to shout and you're shouting at your child, why are you shouting? The question is, do you know that you are the one who taught your child how to shout? When, you know, we always say, we always say this thing that, um, you know, when parents, when they say, um, somebody's knocking at the door and you tell your child to say, I am not around. Okay, another person is talking. Wow. Can we get people to mute themselves? All right. Thank you. All right. So do you always, do you know that that child is learning from you? Your child is learning from you. You are very abusive at home. Your child, your child gets it, gets to school, begins to bully people. Then you're asking questions. Now, my child is a bully. The question is, where do you think they got it from? They got it from you. So the character is referred to the moral and ethical qualities that defines a person. Do you know what 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 morals and ethical qualities? Let's see something called values. Values are deep held beliefs and principles that guide individual attitudes, behavior, and choices. So the question I'm gonna ask you as parents is, what values drive you or what vices drive you? Now, most times I don't like to talk about vices, but you know, every time I always get to start with vices because we see a lot of that in the society. And the society is what? Is what? Is made up of different homes, because the homes, the family unit make up the society. So when we say the society is bad, what we need to be saying is what is happening in different homes? What is happening in different homes? When we see that a lot of people are doing, a lot of teenagers are doing a lot of things, a lot of negative things, what we need to ask is what is happening in the homes of these teenagers? You know, one time I was hearing that they have they have an association of um mothers uh, I, I can't remember how they put it but mothers of of boys who go into yahoo fraud they, they have an association as in as in mothers of yahoo boys they have an association do you understand as in we come together to form an association and we all know that our children do fraud we know that our children do fraud we know so you see that there is a problem with our character now it goes down to say what are those things that we believe in what principles move us what principles what principles guide our behavior because values inform the kind of decisions that we make 
Values inform the decisions that we make. When you are saying to yourself that I am not going to steal, what, what is informing your, your decision is honesty. Do we have a lot of parents that are driven by values or do we have a lot of parents that are driven by vices? Mm -hmm. Do we? That is the question. What is driving your yes and your no? Are they values or are they vices? Vices are the immoral behavior Immoral beliefs, you see, you see someone, you want to cheat the person, you go, you go and see someone and, you know, you say, you say, I want to cheat you. You're saying in your head, all the boys, all the men that easily want to cheat people, you know, fraud and things like that. What they do is they transfer, they transfer stealing to their children. When their children go to school, their children start to steal. Now, who do we blame? We blame the child. The child has made a decision. We we'll blame the child, but also we we'll blame the father. We we'll blame the mother, because everything starts from the home. So let's go to importance of values. Values inform decisions. Values shape our children's character. Values influence our moral compass and our sense of purpose. See, I'm going to say this, and this is the truth. One of the problems that we're having in our country. Is a lack of values. Is a lack of values. Seriously, lack of values. We don't regard people. We don't respect people. We 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 go to places late. We do things like we don't care because there is a lack of values. People who sell things wouldn't do right. People who you know, there's always this thing that. And we, we, we say that, hey, that's what make, makes us Nigerians. No, that is not one, it, that doesn't make us Nigerians. No. no, because every time people travel out, for example, there is a certain way we are viewed. We are viewed as a people who engage in the wrong things. Now, whether that person is even making right decisions he stemmed as a Nigerian because he is a Nigerian, but he stemmed as someone who does the wrong thing. Go to the airport, you spend four hours, they're asking you questions, checking your bags over and over because a number of people have passed through and gone to engage in negative things that we are now transferring to children. Now, this thing is generational. But I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go into anything spiritual, like things like that, because that's not why we're here. But I'm going to tell you that these things that we do and we transfer to our children are things that make us end up most times in churches asking for deliverance because we are not making the right decisions. So the question is: In your home, do you talk about values? So this, I'm going to ask a question. Do you have family values? Do you have family values? Please, I'm going, to, I'm going to the chat room now. Do you have family values? If you have, say yes. Um, if you have, say yes. If you, if you don't, say no. If you have, say yes. If you have, say yes. If, if you have, yes. Please, uh, Mr. Larry, please, can you give us, can you give us your family values? Can you tell us your family values? Can you just write it down? Can you type them? Your family values. Can you type? Can you type? Also, if can, you, can you type? Can you type your? Can you type your family values? Some of them. Can you type them, Mr. Solomon? Thank you so much. Honesty, respect, dignity. These things are important. You know why? Your child will go out, and every time because there are a lot of dishonest people, your child will need to stand and say, and say, I am honest because I belong to whose family? The Mr. Lanre family. Do you understand? Because, and that's how you are going to explain it to your child, that this is who you are, that you respect people, that you have dignity. Do you understand? That is what we do. In my home, God first, God first. No, see, God first. Do we we can't we can't run away? No, we are not going anywhere. God first, respect, learning. You learn. You respect people. 
you are clean. We we have fun. We have fun in my house. We like to play in my house. Do you understand? One of my values is integrity. Fantastic, Mr. Solomon. Now, this value, are you transferring to your children? Because you see, there's something we need to do as parents. You need to be able to tell your children that, look, this is us. This is us. This is the Mr. Solomon Gabriel family. Solomon Gabriel family. This is, this is who we are. Oludu uh, Singh family, God, hospitality, hard work, honesty. Your children need to know this thing. They need to understand it every time. They need to know this is who I am. This is who, you know, my brothers, my sisters, this is who we are. This, do you understand? Because that's where it starts from. That's where it starts from. And you know the funny thing? The funny thing is, if these are your values, it means you must show forth these values. You must show forth these values. Every time I teach children, I always tell them, put your hands on your head. Put your hands on your head. Say, I am bright, smart, intelligent, and responsible. I am bright, smart, intelligent, and responsible. Every time a child comes home, and she's feeling somehow maybe she didn't do well somewhere. I said, I say, put your hands on your head. What do we say? I am bright, smart, intelligent, and responsible. I say, go back and go and pass. Go back. Let's do the, let's learn together, but go back and pass. Go back and succeed because this is who you are. Do you understand? We learn, and there is God's first. The Bible says that that my your children will be taught by the Lord. So I tell them, you are, see, God is teaching you. Do you understand? As you learn, eh, God is teaching you also. Yes, so, so. They yeah. say they tell him, okay. I will listen for for this one. <laughs> please help us mute, please. So do you understand? Do you have family values? How much of, uh, as in, how well do you talk about your family values? How, how well do you talk about your family values? Okay, so let me look at this one now. Integrity, contentment, prayerfulness, love and empathy. See. Integrity. Let me, let, me, let me define, you know, a bit of these values here. We have integrity, which is doing the right thing. Wow, wow. Doing the right thing even when no one is watching you. Contentment, being okay with what you have. Be, being okay with what you have. Being okay with what you have. Do you understand? Being okay with what you have. Um, I was, I was doing something. Okay. Then being prayerful. Nigeria is a very spiritual country, so if you must pray. Then we have love and empathy. These values are missing in, the, in, this, in this society. So it means that when your child goes out with these values, your child will be different. And when you teach your child to stand on these values, your child will be set apart. Your child will be seen. Because we see too many negative things. The ones that are doing the right things will shine. And those, those, those things are what we need to start doing as parents. Your need, the, way, the, easiest way, you know, the easiest way to shine here yeah, as a child is when you put in some values and your child begins to know these things are not, I can't do these things. I will not do these things because they're outside my values. There's something I always teach children called the A to Z of values. Appreciation, belief. There's some, someone did the design for me here. Um, so we have appreciation, we have belief, it's a cube. So we so my children see it every time. We have appreciation, we have belief, we have courage, we have determination, we have empathy. Do you understand? We have faith. We have generosity. When your children are doing things, you say, what does G stands for? What does G stand for? Generosity. Do you understand? That's who you are. Do you understand? That's who you are. That's who you are. Do you understand? Why? Why is yourself? Why is yourself? Be yourself. You are not abnormal. Be yourself. Do you understand? N is nice, niceness. O is observant. P, prayerfulness. Observant. We're in a country where we need to be observant. The A to Z of values, very, very important. Do you understand? I, integrity. 
K, kindness, L, love. So these values are very, very important. They are very important. It's, and it's the funny thing, it's not hard. It's not hard. I'm going to tell you why. It's not hard. It's not hard. So we're going to talk about the role of parents. We're going to talk about the role of parents. Okay, so I, I said everything starts from the home. I've said this thing before. Everything starts from the home. This is who you are. Number one, you're a role model. You're a role model. You're a role model. You're a role model in the sense that, you know, there's something that we say, model, teach, pray, pass it on. Hear this again, no? model, teach, pray, pass it on. Model, that's who you are. Teach, you must teach your children. Pray, you must pray for your children. Pass it on. Pass it on is that because they see you doing this thing, you pass it on to them. So the first one is that you're a role model. You're a role model. They're looking at you. Your children are the best copycats ever. They are better than Chinese. They copy you. If you ask the children, talk like your father now, you will hear everything that your father, daddy has been saying, they will tell you. Everything mommy has been saying, they will say it. Talk like, talk like your elder brother, they will say it. Because guess what? They are watching you. Children are very, very observant. They will watch you. And the easiest way to teach your children the right things to do is by being that thing you want to pass, by being that thing you want to transfer, by being who you want to. That, that value that you say you are. So it means that for me, if I say God first, they must see God in me. If I say respect, they must see I respect people. If I learn it, it means that they must see me learning. Do you understand? If they, must, if they, if they see entertainment, they must, I, I must have time for my children. We dance, we play, we take funny pictures and things like that because that's how I want my children to be. Now, they are, you are a mentor. They will come to you. They will come to you when, because you are, you are in different seasons. When they encounter things, they will come and talk to you about it. That this thing happened. Then because you're a mentor, you will tell them what to do and how to go about those things. You are an influencer. As 26 one of the reasons, one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why you find your children doing the wrong things is because parents don't understand that one thing that must happen in life is influence. Is what? Influence. Is influence. If you are not the first influencer of you, someone or something else will influence them. Like, see this mentorship now. There are times that people meet me and tell me, oh, um, Uksale, I need to mentor my children. I need to mentor my children. I say, okay, there's no problem. I'll have sessions with them from time to time. Do you understand? So that your child can always talk to someone. I, there's, a, there's, there's a girl that I mentor. She's in, she's in university. And most times she'll just send me a message and she's telling me the issues that she's having. And I say, relax. And I begin to tell her, do this, do this, do this, do this. The mother sometimes, before the mother is even calling me to tell me the problem, she has told me already, you need mentors. You need mentors. Your children need mentors. Your children need, if you're not there, who can they also talk to? I have girls in the house. My I, there are people that my children can talk to. I have told them, if there's anything, you can talk to this person. Because your children need trusted adults. Mm -hmm. You're an influencer. An influencer is someone who does something and children see and they want to do what the person has done. So it's just like a role model. Mm -hmm. So it's just like all the all the people that your children are watching on TV. If you notice, they'll start talking like them, start dancing like them, start behaving like them. They're influencing your children. Do you understand? So programmer means I, I I always tell parents this as you as you as if once you have a child, there's something called the program, the programmer and the programmed. The program, the programmer and the programmed. Other hero can have some stretches where he does and shoot the ball up in a hurry. Okay, so there is always a programmer. 
the, the things your children watch, their programs. Do you understand? There's somebody who has created a program. You know, that person is a programmer. That person wants to influence your child with something. So if you have your children watching the wrong things, the person who program, who has done the program will influence your children because your children are the programmed. They are the programmed. So you must be the first programmer. You are the person who will design the program. And the way you can design your program, the first way is by what? Having values. Now, when you want to watch things on your you know, on TV, what are the things that your children watch? Have you spoken to them about the things they can watch and things they cannot watch? Do you explain to them why they can't watch these things? You know, there was a day, there was a day I, um, I was watching a movie. The movie was a horror movie. My daughter, she called my name. And she said, Daddy, from the sound of what you are watching, is something I can't watch. Please, I need to talk to you. I put it off. Straight. I put it off. I put it off. The, the mind of my daughter or my children are very important. So regardless of the things that I like, when it comes to them, when it comes to programming them right, when it comes to influencing them right, I forget about myself. You might say that, ah, you're not depriving yourself. Oh, please. There is something called sacrifice. Because you love them, you will sacrifice to give them the best. Do you understand? So it means that you who is building a strong character in your child, the question is, what are you ready to teach? What are you ready to sacrifice? How are you ready to transform yourself first? Because while you are saying, respect people, respect people, respect people, are you respectful? Go and read your books. Are you, do you study? When you say things to your children, do you do those things? You want your child to have integrity. Do you have integrity? Do you have? Do you do the right thing even when no one is watching? Because you must be the person. So I have there's this thing. There's this thing I call conquer. You know, I created this. I created this. This thing. I created this game just to teach my children values. So I have values and I have vices here. So I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you something to so tell you how. How important it is, you know, when it, when it comes to making the right decision. So, I have lies here, telling lies. Lies. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, can, okay, yeah. I have telling lies here. And I ask my daughter, or I ask my children, or any child I'm mentoring, and I say, what value do you need to conquer this? Because the name of the card is called Conquer. What do you need to conquer this? These lies, and the child begins to think. So if your child doesn't understand the value to conquer a vice, it means that if that vice shows up, your child do, would not know the right decision to make. So I have good manners here. So you see something when you allow your children to see, they will know the kind of right. They will know the kind of decisions to make. They will know the kind of decisions to make. Do you understand? So they have good manners. Oh, what is good manners? What do you mean by good manners? Defend yourself. And they will begin to speak. They will say, and when it comes to adding knowledge, I will add knowledge. Because I will create scenarios for them to make them understand that, look, as you grow older, these are the things that are going to happen to you. These are the kind of decisions that you need to make. This, and this, is, why, this is why you are a different child. This is why you cannot follow people to do the things that they are doing. So when it comes to time, do you also have time for your children? Do you also have time to tell your children things or do you just say you're tired? Okay, let's go on. Understanding the child approach. So, the, so we have five things. It's called child. We have consistency. We have honesty. We have integrity. We have love and compassion. And we have discipline. We have discipline. Let's go to the first one, consistency. And I said something here. Don't do it once. Don't do it once. Don't do it once. So let me tell you something. There's one mistake we do as parents. We make as parents. You tell your child one thing, 
and you think you don't need to tell your child again. It's a lie. You can't say it once and go and sleep. You can't. You must remind your children. Now, there is something called muscle memory. Let me tell you this thing. If, if you know what muscle memory is, then I'm sure you understand what I mean. Muscle memory is the ability to do something over time that your muscles have a memory of that action. So one of the reasons why people who practice karate, karate, all those people that, you know, they tell them to kick 1,000 times, they tell them to do something, you know, 500 times. What they are doing is they are creating a muscle memory so that when danger comes, they respond, they, their muscles respond as they have taught the memory. That is why springs always go back to their original uh, shape, even when you stretch them, because they have shocked them into that memory that this is how you must be. So parents, you can't do it once and move on. Your child is growing. You must always tell your child, do you remember who you are? Do you know who you are? Your child can tell you consistently. Your child can tell you every time. Consistency in parenting brings stability. Predictability it means that you can predict the things that your children will do or daddy will do. And emotional security in your children. So you must create routines. Your child knows when they come back from school, what do they do? Do they know? They know what they do when they wake up. They know that when they wake up, they... You know, they brush their teeth, have their bath, have breakfast and go to school. That's what you have done every time. That's consistency. That's why they do it. They have a muscle memory of those things. They know that once it's weekend, they relax a little bit. Because you relax a little bit. Because you say to yourself, it is weekend. So it's because you have said it is weekend. That's why they relax. If you as a parent say, even if it's Saturday or Sunday, you must wake up early and have your bath. Your children will wake up with that mindset. And when they're talking to their friends, they say, no, that's not what we do in our family. What, what we do is we have our bath very early, you know, regardless of the day of the week. But guess what? You are the one who has created that consistency. You are the one who has created that routine. The rules and, uh, and consequences that provide structure and guidance for your child's behavior. You are the one. Nobody, if you let them, if you, because you see, if you allow your child, your child will just do anything. Your child will just do anything. And you can be shouting and be saying, I say, should do it. don't you know? Don't you know? The child does not know. Because when they give it to the child, the child didn't know anything. It's you that begin to teach the child. The child begins to see, oh, this is how mommy does things. This is how daddy does things. This is, this is it. Every night before you sleep in my house, you go and lay your bed. Oh. And when I enter, your room cannot be dirty because every time the room is not clean, I call them and say, look, what's the value? What's one value in this house? Cleanliness. Move, clean your room. So before they sleep, they lay their bed, they lay their this bed. So they understand these things. Oh, you must always assist. You must always help. Do you understand? I run, I run a foundation for, for, you know, for children in underserved communities. When I'm going sometimes, I take my children and I tell them, this is why I do what I do. This is why I do what I do. Do you understand? This is why I do what I do. You must consistent if you want to build a strong character in your children. You must be consistent. You must talk to them. Your child is your child is fourteen. Your child will begin to feel like a big boy. But can you begin to tell your child? Can you begin to tell him the things he needs to know at his age at fourteen? You don't. You can't even say he's a big boy. No, no way. He's a big boy, yes, where he goes to, but when he comes to your house, you need to begin to tell him, look, these are the things you will encounter. If you make these decisions, you will get into trouble. And you see something, because I always teach responsibility. I always tell them, there are two meanings of responsibility. One is that you must know the things to do, the right things to do, and do them at the right time. The second one is that you must be ready to bear the consequences, the positive and negative consequences of your actions now. This thing that you have done, do you know the consequences for it? Most times, most children don't know because they, are, they were never taught. I did a course for children called Actions and Consequences. I teach these things, actions and consequences. They know the actions, they don't know the consequences. They don't. 
I'm telling you for free now, do it. Ask your children, do you know the consequences of this thing? And find out if they know. Ask them deeper things. Do you know the consequences of these things? As you're going to school, do you know the consequences when you sit down and you read? Oh, this will happen. Do you know when you play and you're distracted by your friends, what will happen? All my friends, all your friends, all of us, you, you will fail. And when you fail, you will go to different homes and you will meet your parents. If you fail, if you have to repeat, you will repeat because that is the consequence of the action that you have chosen, the choice that you have chosen. Do you understand? All right, so let's run. Honesty. Have honest communication, communication and transparency. Honest communication and transparency foster trust and authenticity in parent-child relationship. Honesty is key. You must have, see, you must have honest communications at home. You must have it. You must have it. A parent reached out to me some, you know, just, just, just while I was in this men's hangout. And she said, I need you to talk to my son. I said, what's the problem? What's the problem? And she said, his mood has changed. I said, something has happened. Something has happened. He's a young, he's a young teenager. Something has happened. In her friends, so, you know, different things. And when she went, she, I said, go and have a chat with your son. Have a chat with your son. She had a very honest communication, you know, conversation with him. Open communication. And she said it. Oh, my old oh, friends. They, they, they got me watching what I was not supposed to watch. So he knew he wasn't supposed to watch it. Now you see something. If that home is not open for honest communications, he will hide it. And once he hides it, that thing, that seed has, that they have planted in him will grow. And when it grows, it will destroy his life. And I said, look, when you, if your son starts to watch porn, if he doesn't deal with it, he will start to masturbate. If one starts to masturbate, he will start to do other things. He will start to stay alone in the house. He will start to want to watch these things in the home. Eat different things. So encouraging children to express themselves honestly creates an environment of openness and understanding. It's very important. It's very, you know, um, top flight is a secondary school. So it means that your children are beginning to, you know, they're beginning to see themselves as, oh, come on. So if your child doesn't understand identity, then there's a problem. If your child doesn't understand actions and consequences, there is a problem. If your child doesn't understand values and character, there is a problem. And everything must start from the home. You can have mentors who also teach them these things, but it must be what taught. It must be transferred. Okay. Integrity. Very important. Integrity. Do the right thing even when no one's watching you. Doing the right thing when no one is watching you. When no one is watching you, what are you doing? So modeling integrity in actions and decisions teaches children the importance of doing what is right, even when it's difficult. When and you know the some you know the funny thing, life will test all your children, all our children. Everyone, let me let me not say all your all our children. Life will test them. Life will test them when they see what is not theirs, when they steal. Me, my mother taught me. My mother taught me. Say, okay, so I didn't tell you my full name. My, everybody calls me Uncle Sele, but my full name is Sele Kuma. So my mom will call my full name Sele Kuma. Don't take what is not your own. Work hard and get that thing that you want. Hi! It has stayed. Since that time, it has stayed till now. <laughs> Work hard and get what is yours. That thing that you want. Work hard. Think. There, she'll say there, there's, there's a lot of information everywhere. Think. Create something. Let them pay you for that thing. Then you will buy that thing that you desire. Don't take what is not your own. I transferred it to my children. So it means that it's generational now. From my mother to me. And now I tell different, I tell children. Because luckily for me, this is what God wants me to do. So I tell children a lot. You see something, you see how a certain transfer can affect generations. Because I tell you, you must have integrity. It will, sometimes it will be hard. But hold, stand. Oh, people will laugh at you. Oh, people have laughed at me for different reasons. People have laughed at me for different reasons. Different reasons. I have stayed 
stayed broke because of these things. Stayed. If if you do, if you like, don't give me enough. Stay. I will stay. <laughs> it is it hard? Oh yes, it is. But you see something when you come out strong. Nothing. You see, you you can talk about it without shame. You can talk about it without shame. But it must start from us as parents. So instilling moral courage, empower empower students to stand up for their values and make ethical choices. Stand. You know, you know, there's this school, there's this school that I go to coach every Friday. I go to coach them every Friday. In fact, the, the head of school did not he want to hear. She said, Uncle Sele, we're buying your Fridays. And you know what? One day, one, two friends were crying. And I said, ah, ah, what's going on? What's going on? Are, you know, my daughters, why are you crying? And one was saying that she said she's not going to be my friend anymore. I said, what? Why? I said, there must be a reason. And I said, what did she do? And because we, we are very open, we communicate. Don't lie. Don't hide. Say it. If you hide, it might destroy you. Say it. Release it and be free. And she said, she came towards my breast area and did like this. And I said, no. I said, no. I said, no. You know what? I asked her, I said, what you did, is it right? She cried and said, no. And she begged. I said, I will never do it again. I said, you are friends. But it doesn't give you the right to abuse the body of your friend. Never. They're not, see, they're not in second. These ones are not in secondary school. They're in primary school. Nothing. I'm telling you. So you know that the society we are living in, children are seeing different things, seeing different things, seeing different things, seeing different things, seeing different things. Some are thinking that it's okay for me to do it. It's okay. They just feel it's okay. But you see something, when you teach your children right, your child can stand and say no to some things. And they don't care. How anybody sees them, what is wrong is wrong. There are children like that. Your child can be one of them if you teach them. Do you understand? Build that strong, that strong moral courage. Do you understand? Build it that you can do the right thing. See, parents, I, I saw a movie called 12th Fail. My time is running. 12th Fail. 12th Fail. It's an Indian movie. I sat down, I watched that movie, and I shed tears. And I saw the story of a man, because it's a true life story. A story of a man who, when he saw one policeman, he saw a policeman. The policeman came to their school, and they were about to cheat. And he arrested the, the principal. He arrested the principal. He now, he now went to the policeman and asked him some questions. And you know, they now said, they now said, if we have more people, uh, you know, at the top, things will be better. People will not do the negative things like we have in our country. And the guy made it his duty. For 19 years, he he stayed on the right thing until he came on top. Hmm. I said, look at one man's story and how the man passed you know, started influencing his community. He stayed. He wrote an exam. He read. He read, read, stayed until they chose him. I'm telling you, true life story. So, parents, it can be done. You can build, and he took one man. And when, see the funny thing, when he succeeded, he wanted to get married. He went to that man first to invite him for his wedding. And the man looked at him and said, who are you? And he told him who he was. And he said, sir, can you, you can't remember me. You told me. Hey, parents, we can build strong character in our children. We can. The man cried and hugged him. This boy that I, had, I, 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 I showed how to do the right thing is now superior to me in rank. Yes, the guy became superior to that man. But he hugged, they hugged each other and said, we are now two. So, we have love and compassion. 
please, parents, we need to transfer love to our children. We need to transfer love so that our children can also transfer love to people that they meet. Too many people have transferred hate. So promoting empathy and kindness towards others, cultivate compassion, empathy, and a sense of community. Encourage respect for people. Don't look down on anybody. You know, today I was driving and I I saw someone, you know, in pain and I and I gave the person money. My children asked me, said, Daddy, why did you give that person money? And I said, I said, she's going through so much pain. That's why I had to give her this money. My children learned something there. My children learned something there. It's a love and compassion is a strong value that if it doesn't start from the home, your children might not give it out. Because what you give in your home is what they transfer. What you what they give eh, is what, what you give as parents is what they transfer to other people. There is something I call the adjour of parenting. A job of parenting. You know the way we do contribution for money. That's what a joy is. But now you see, for parenting, what we do is we contribute to the character of the society. We contribute to the character of the society. The society we see today is what we have contributed to. The society we see today is what people, different people have contributed. Now you see something, the school, top flight school, eh? the character of top flight starts from the value of the school, one. Then secondly, the values that parents have transferred to their children, when they get to school, there will be a conflict when children are trying to go against the values of the school. And now you see something, that conflict is always most times on what children have brought from their homes to the school or what they have learned from other children. Now you see something, their job is what we have, as parents have contributed. We have contributed. Now, top flights will be exceptional and has been exceptional because they have overcome the vices that they have seen and, say, and said to themselves that, look, we will overcome and make sure these children come out right after we enforce and teach the right values in the school. So parents, we also have, need to help the school. We also need to help the school. I'm telling you. So that's why we're having a training like this because it's a it's it's shared. The responsibility is shared. It's, it's like it's called co-parenting. It's called co-parenting. Do you understand? So for someone like me now, as a, you know, as a father to a lot of children, you're doing my surrogate that uh, you know activity or, or assignment. You know, I'm calling different children. I'm asking them questions. While I'm asking them, I'm asking the mother. So what are they learning at home right now? So why they look forward to hearing from me, as a sorry dad, I'm asking different questions. Do you understand? I'm telling them, when you go to school, you must sit. I told them, send, you will send me their results. Send me their results because the children respect me. Do you understand? And they see me as someone they can call father. Do you understand? They behave themselves. So the last one is discipline. Now, discipline. You know, discipline strategies that focus on teaching rather than punishing, promote self-discipline, responsibility, and problem-solving skills. Now, I always say something that you have to be consistent in teaching your children things. Now, one thing we must never do as parents is leave our children in a place where they can learn, they can share, they can transform because you hit them a lot. So the question is, what are you really teaching? Because discipline, it also means discipline. Discipline. Most times parents beat their children for things that they have not even taught them or for things that they have not ensured that the child has learned. Do you understand? So you will not teach, you will not instruct, you don't have the right structure, but next thing what you want to do is beat and almost massacre your children. Sometimes it affects them. Oh, a lot of times it affects them. A lot of times it affects them. A lot of times it affects our children. 
And let me tell you something, you must understand the time and season that you're in, that there are different ways of raising children. The way they raise you is not the way you raise your kids. You 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 beat slap everything, but, but, but your child is afraid of you. When something happens, the child can't talk to you. Then when when there is problem, you are not saying, "Why didn't you tell me?" I think it was last year or last two years. We lost some children in in in, in different schools. The children wanted to tell that their parents something, but the parents did not get it. When my children come home, if there's anything wrong with them, uh, they'll come and tell me. Do you understand? They always come and tell me. They always come. They always come and tell me. Come and tell me because I, when they get out of school today, oh, let's just we we'll talk. We we'll talk school things. We we'll, we'll, see. The truth is, as parents, one thing that we must always do is communicate to our children consistently. Beating will not be there. You will not. You will not beat. You will not shout. Because if you connect with your children a lot, your children will know what you want and what they're supposed to do because there is always instruction and there's always teaching. Those two things must never leave you. Look, in the Bible, we say something. Say, dear son, listen to your father's instruction. Listen to your mother's teaching. If there is no instruction, there is no teaching. What did they hear? Nothing. They did not hear anything. It means that you did not give it. If you did not give it, what is that transformation that you're looking for that you will find? You won't see it. And you see something, it now leads to you at the time, now using your words to affect your children. Because when you begin to call their names, your words have power. Your words can transform your children. But we're not going into that now. We're talking about discipline. Holding your children accountable for their actions helps them learn from mistakes and develop. See, parents, parents, we, 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 we have authority over our children. Now, that authority given to us is to build, is to transform them in the way they should go so that when they grow old, they will not depart from it. Let your words your training, your yeah. character. Let it be in your children. Yeah. Let them remember, this is what daddy said. This is what mommy said. I learned this thing from my father. I learned this thing from my mother. It's just the way I've seen, I've seen friends who learned some funny things from their parents, you know, and those things have not left them till now. It means that you can also grow your children. Excuse me, it's just, it's just the way the Igbos do Apprenticeship. How a, a man would teach someone how to make money, how to do business, how to do different things. Do you understand? Now, what they do is they teach you the value of wealth, wealth creation, which is something I called the, the wealth exchange, the wealth transfer, the value exchange transfer, which every parent must do. That's what they do. So are you trying to tell me now that it, we can't also transfer the right character to our children. You see that the person who is teaching the boy how to become a good businessman is first a businessman. Yeah. So it means that whatever you want to teach your children, you must first be that person before you then transfer to your children. I want to say thank you so much. Um, I hope I've not um, spoken for oh spoken for long enough. So um, and, um so we can take questions now. Thank you very much. All right. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hi, I can hear you. We have some okay. to recap for the parents that joined us, you know, when the session had already started. Before we take questions, their parents, just to recap, um, we started um, earlier around, uh, I think, 10 minutes after six or 15 minutes after six. And um, uh, Mr. Sele has been sharing with us, first of all, what values are. And that is basically the things that you hold important the characters that you as a parent holds counts to be very important i don't know if we can hear me can we yes yes i can hear you ma all right so we yes we can hear you oh great thank you parent so we have mentioned those who came in earlier have mentioned some of the things that they find very valuable and important in their own homes and mr seller um gave us the a to z of values so we start starting from appreciation 
on, on and on and on. And I think we'll share that resource later on. So I just want to jump in as well and say transferring values really is a game, is a marathon. It's a, it requires a lot of patience because we have a lot of parents that love values and, res and wish for their child to, you know, carry on high values uh, or have a high value system and be values conscious. They want their children to be honest at all times, have high integrity, and they themselves might be, you know, upstanding people. However, because of several other influences, they're having a difficult time with their child. I will let you, I will just let you understand first of all that yes, it's a patience game whereby you are not, you are creating a, an emotionally safe environment when you are training, your, when you are giving the value system. For example, just as the speaker said, that in this family, we don't tell lies. Now, when you are saying that there are two ways the child can hear it, it's that in this family, the first one can be like a threat to them. If you tell lies, I will kill you by myself. Guess what? Those type of strict, overly strict and fierce, scary parents who have children that will have one character at home and one character in school because they need an outlet. So you need to create an emotionally stable, let them know they are loved and valued and wanted. And they are not, um, you know, they, you feel they know, but they still need to hear it. You know, just as um, we all need to hear from our loved ones sometimes that we are special. So please in, in, ensure that, um, um, that you yourself, you are having a healthy mind space. So when they do something that triggers you, it's very important that you don't blow up. Or when you discover, because I remember I worked with a parent and a child, the child was engaged in some very funny behavior. And as a result of that, the parent blew up and that made the child not want to speak up about what they were doing again. So it is something that you need to build that trust with them so that they will um, know that there's a safe space with you. That's all I have to say for now. So definitely if we have questions regarding how we can build character, uh, let's ask them uh, at this time. Yes, and very quickly, I would like to recognize uh, um, Mr. Chris Mbago. Thank you for joining us. Um, Mrs. Christiana. Um, Okay, some, some Gmail names are there. Okay, Mrs. Ehumadu is here. Thank you for joining us, joining us, great mommy. And you've been here with us for quite a while. That's great. And uh, okay, that is, um, I can see the who am I. That means uh, you are David's mom or dad. So thank you for joining us for our very first online parent seminar since 2000. And um, 2020, since 2020. So thank you so much. We appreciate you. So please, if you have questions very quickly, he's an expert. He's here to answer all those heartfelt questions that we as parents have about. Um, okay. Yes. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Good evening. We can hear you. Okay. Okay. I'm Gabriel Solomon. And I want to ask uh, the trainer a question. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I can. Okay. Can he hear me? The the trainer, can he hear me? Okay, yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Oh, hear okay, you. okay. All right, sir. So, so first of all, I really want to appreciate you. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much for the insights you just uh, shared with us. And like we all know, we understand that life is governed by laws. The law of promotion, like we all know, teaches that we can only uh, pr uh, be promoted but so on instruction we have followed over the time. We can only reproduce something that we are. And so I think you have actually trauma light on these things. And I want to ask a question. There is something I call shaking on the crowd. Can you hear me, sir? Hello? Okay. Okay, shaking on the crowd. Now, I think you discussed about it. Now, note this, there are some parents that have... Um, positive reasons or uh, good reasons why 
they fail to spend time with their children and knowing that there is no way their children will actually be trained well without their presence. Now, you know, such children, they have a different way of living their lives when they have been trained by some other presence around them. Now, what do you have to say about parents that have good reasons for not spending time with their children? You know, such children check out on the crowd. When they come and discover that their parents are not there, there for them, they check on the crowd. Now, what do you have to uh, advise such parents that have good reasons for not spending time with their children? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Solomon. Um, yeah. So basically, you talked about reason for not spending. Okay, so I want to ask you a question. Can you give me, let me make it easy, one reason why you can why you can't spend time with your child? Very justifiable reason. Okay, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you. Trust me. Okay, okay. So sorry, I think I didn't actually introduce myself very well to you. I'm Gabriel Solomon, one of the staff in Tough Light College. I'm just asking on behalf of parents. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, now let yeah, me yeah. So, so let me say this. Now, the currency for children is is time. Listen, you know, the currency for children is time. It means that as a parent, you must look for a way to spend time with your children. Now, even those who are always at home, because they don't spend quality time, they do you know, you know, when you are. You know when you you are doing something with with a consciousness that look I want to transfer to my children so the time I'm spending with them I know what I'm transferring. Do you understand? Not just sitting yeah. at home, but quality time, quality time. So it means that if you are not around, your child misses out on that. Now, even when you maybe you say work is the issue, when you get home, what do you do? Can your one hour? Can your two hours at home? be very can, can it be quality do you understand because I, I want to tell you the truth i want to tell you the truth and, and i'll be and i'll be very very factual every every parent every child needs their parent every child needs time with their parent do you understand so for a parent who is not always around there will be a gap now the question is how do you feel that gap when you are when you're not around or when you're not in town do you talk to your children do you well, yeah. Do you have a way of talking to them and, you know, uh, discussing on some certain things, you know, telling them how much you miss them and, you know, making them understand that, look, when I come home, we're going to spend time to get... Do you, the thing is, even when you are away, when, even when you're away from your kids, eh, it still shows that you are very intentional about transferring to your children because that time, that time where you transfer to them is very important to you. Do you understand? You have to look for a way. I can't tell you that is, as in you can just leave your kids and move, move on with your life because you are busy. No, I won't tell you to do that. I will tell you that because you are busy, it means that you have more work to do because your children need time. Your children, as they are growing, they will need to fill some spaces in them. If you don't feel that space, someone else will. Most times when I'm training kids, you know what I say? I always tell them that your parents sent me to tell you something. When you get home, ask your parents. I always tell parents that when I finish with your children, make sure you ask them what I said. Then add to it. You know why? Why? It's because if I spend one hour with your child, teaching them about something, if you spend... 10 minutes, adding to that thing that I said, you have done, you have spent one hour, 10 minutes because it shows that you are interested in them and you understand this thing that they need to know. So you see something, even if you are not around, eh, you won't give anybody any excuse when your child falls. There was, let, me, let me give an example. Let me, give you a, let me tell you a story, um, Solomon. There was a case of a girl who was always abused at home. But mommy was very busy. Daddy was not always around. So she said to herself that because it happens most times when they're on holidays, that she was abused by the gardener and the driver and things like that. So one, one day before school closed, she wanted to take her life. So she wanted to, 
you know, slit, commit suicide and things like that. But one teacher noticed and followed her. And when the child entered the toilet, the teacher caught her at that time when she was about to take her life. And, you know, they took her to the guidance and counseling person and she started telling them the story. When they called the mother, the mother was still saying, I am busy. I will talk to you later. I will talk to you later. I am busy. I am busy. The, the, the man just said something. Your child is dead and caught the phone. The woman left the work and went home, went to, went to school. And guess what? When they told her what happened, she fainted. Now, no work. She's in the hospital. So you can't tell me that your child is not important to you. The, when your child is important, you will make time. Mm. Yes, yes, your yes. Your child yes, is yes. important to you. You will make time. That That's is true. Right. You must make time for your child. See, let me tell you something. Most times when we have children, we just we just have we're happy that we have children. We want to pay school fees. We are good. We say the top flight to take care of them in terms of character and things like that, and we move on. No, that's not how it's done. When it comes to building kids, no way. That's not it. You don't leave your children anyhow. No, you train your children at home. Top top flight to do their work. When you do your own, when top flight is not doing what they're supposed to do, you will know. So it means that you can't leave all the work for top flight because there's work for you to be done in the house. I greet you special. Okay. Uh, yes, question. yes. Thank you so much. Okay. So, can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me, sir? Hello. I can see, I can see here. Okay. Now you 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 said something about actions leading to consequences. Actions and right. consequences. Actions and consequences. Am I right? Yes. yes, actions and consequences. Actually, actions are what leads to consequences. All right. So what do you have to um uh share with parents that that doesn't really understand the um the line between actions and consequence because when you see some children they have really buy into some actions that have actually uh, given them some lifetime of which the consequence is something that is going to really be bad so what do you have to tell parents that focus on dealing with the consequence not the roots not what led to those consequences what do you have to say what's your reaction on it parents that only focuses on the consequence Solomon. of what yeah yeah yeah. Solomon. Pardon? Let me let me answer you. Wait, let me answer you. Let me answer okay. you. Relax. Right. Okay. So the, the way you are sounding, you are sounding like you've encountered a whole lot of parents like that. But so let me say this now in your in your defense. Now, for every parent that is here, I I want to appeal to you. But um, when it, when when you see that a child has done something. So let me give an example. Um, the lady who I was talking to said she noticed that her child has changed. Do you understand? So when she had a talk with him, he said that it was from friends. So you see something from friends and they led him to watch porn. So you see, when you must do it. You must always do a, something called the backtrack. This you've seen the result. Let's go back. What caused the result? Oh, this action. Oh, what influenced this action? Then we now begin to deal with the root cause of these things. If it's TV, if it's um, you know, okay. So let, let me let me let me let me say something. Let me just quickly browse through something. Now there are seven things I always say parents must transfer. It's called the life transfers. I can't talk about it now because it's, it's a whole class, it's a whole training on its own. So there's seven things. Now there's a God transfer. Can in another place. There's, there's, some, there's something called the God transfer. There's something okay. called the character transfer. There's something called the wealth and value exchange transfer. There's something called the people transfer. There's something called the entertainment transfer. Then I added one more. It's called the word transfer. Now you see something. You must begin to transfer all those things. Now the funny thing is that we have time to transfer. It's, it's just because I've outlined 
this eight transfers. But you see, these are things that we 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 always talk about at home, but we we don't have any structure to those things. Now, if your home is such a place where you know you have a lot of teachable moments, teachings, instructions, and things like that, your 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 children will begin to learn how not to grow some seeds. Now, when your children go out, there are things that they see that become seeds to them. Now, those seeds, when they feed those seeds, they become, they become, they, they have fruits. So for example, a child who likes to, you know, who likes screen, if you don't deal with it early, it will become a problem to that child. Because your child will not able to, won't be able to concentrate. So for me, my house now, when it's Monday to Fridays, we don't allow our children watch screen. We don't allow TVs and things like that. No TV. When it's Saturday, you can watch because we want you to concentrate on on learning. Because learning is also a value in my home. So because entertainment is also a value in the home, we know that there's time for everything. Mm. Then we now teach how do you how do you entertain yourself. We now teach you the kind of things to watch and the kind of things you cannot watch. Because we know that there are some things, there are some vices that come, the seeds, even the entertainment too has its own seed. Do you understand? That's how somebody, the boys who are getting other people to watch porn, for example, it means that they, they need other people to join them so that it becomes the right thing to do. They now say to themselves that, look, this is the right thing to do. It's okay to do this thing. Do you understand? So. People must join them. And that's why we notice a lot of people in Nigeria engage in vices because we have more people joining them saying it's okay to do those things. So now let's go back to your question. Now, for parents, parents will begin to, should begin to understand that there are root causes of different things. And if you don't deal with the root cause, you can never deal with the problem. So that's why they will, sometimes they will tell you that shouting is not dealing with the root cause at all. When you shout, what you are just doing to yourself is you are teaching your child how to be a loudspeaker as they grow older. And if your child doesn't even learn how to parent, they will also not learn how to deal with the root cause of different things. They will just keep shouting. Do you understand? So learn to deal with root causes of different things or different issues so that you can address the problem. All right. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that is a great point. Do we have any parents with another question? Because um, I have a whole lot of questions as well. And I'm sure this is the opportunity to really get some more perspective as we talk about building character and values. This is going to just be the first of perhaps several other virtual workshops like this. Because think about it from the comfort of our homes, we can network together as parents and really work on our skills. Because parenting is a skill as well. That is um, the truth. It's actually something that requires a whole lot of training. And that is why we have brought this platform as well. Um, I have a question here, which, uh, okay, it's just, I'm the only one that can see it, I guess. Is that if the child has already reached teenage age before the parents started having time with the child, is it? What can the parent do? Is it possible? Or what can the parent do? Sorry, please come again. I, I don't think you're loud and clear because um, I, I, I don't know. I said, uh, there's a question here that what should the parent do if they are the only, um, if they, the child is a teenager? Let me read the question again. Okay. okay. Um, and they want to pass the values across. All right. See, um, it's not too late. It's not too late. It, it, it's not because see, I, I like to say, I like to say something. Every home has something called the called an atmosphere. Every home has an atmosphere. Every home. Now that atmosphere is determined by daddy and mommy. Do you understand? That atmosphere is determined by daddy and mommy. So you see, when you align to say that this is how we want to grow our kids, that atmosphere is in the home because there's an alignment already. So what you then begin to do is begin to align the children with what you have agreed as parents. Now, if this thing wasn't done, you know, 
when the child you know was a baby so he's new to it so what you're doing mm -hmm. is can you sit down most this thing called you know this thing called family meeting is what every home must have you must have family meetings you must have family meetings you must have family meetings like early in the year you must have family family meetings mid year it depends on how how much you want to transfer things, you know, to in your home. But you must have family meetings, you know, because we 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 as parents, we don't, you know, a lot of times we don't we don't see the need for all these things. So to your question, now you must sit down with that teenager to begin to make him understand some things. Tell him this is how this home is going to need. Just tell him start. But you must know something. Someone who started earlier and someone who started late. You know, we'll have two different results. It means that there's more work for you because you're starting late. Do you understand? But you must start it. But you, must start it. you must start it. There's no, and you you know, there's this thing with, um, there's this thing, there's this thing called leaving your children, in, there's this thing called fig leaves. There's this thing called fig leaves. Now, there's a way you must never leave your children. Don't leave your children in fig leaves. Now, th there's an acronym for that. You know, don't leave your children in fig leaves. So because we are, I don't, I don't want to generalize, but in most homes, in most homes, we parent by force, parent by, parent by fear, that we parent by instilling fear. We parent in such a way that um, we're not teaching our children, but we're using fear to teach them. We're shouting to them. That would, even when you want to talk to him, because when your child goes out, there is a certain way he wants to be loved there's a certain way he wants to be he wants to be spoken to but you don't understand how to deal with teenagers you are there shouting you are there doing all he, all he wants to do is leave the home and go and stay with people that will give him peace then he will do what he wants to do then just come and stay because what he wants to do at home is just sleep and wake up you are already losing your child do you understand the next thing your child gets into trouble and they're calling you and you're shouting that this child will kill me but the thing is the home atmosphere is it that is it such that a child can stay and learn? Is it such that the child can stay and be transformed? Because you think that you can't talk to your child, but your child wants to be spoken to. Your child wants to listen to you. Your child wants to laugh with you. Do you understand? We we I've seen situations where, you know, is even the Bible where we say uh, children must honor their fathers and their mothers. We it gets to a point. We've seen situations whereby children don't have good relationships with their parents till when they're much older. And because of that honor, they now go back and you see, you didn't have, you didn't have a good relationship and it's, your child is even pained. So it means that we must, we must start early. So for the child who is a teenager, there's no, there's nothing wrong in starting now. Start now. Start now because you are beginning to be open. You are beginning to have honest conversations. You are teaching integrity. You are teaching your your child will learn, even when he makes mistakes. As long as he can come home to tell you about the mistake he has made, and you are not busy shouting and trying to chase him out, but you are telling him that I know you may, I know that uh, you know that I talked to, I spoke to you about this thing. Do you understand? Yeah. You. I've done this, but I will not make you go away. I will make sure you stay. But these are the things you need to understand. The society, no matter how much, when you are caught, they will treat you as you have acted. Do you understand? So you are, it's not too late. Start, start now. I'm seeing uh, Mrs. Zifoma saying that Mrs. Zifoma, this this son in my head, this seen this son in before. Uh, what what effective ways can we discipline our children without yelling and punishing them? Okay, so now the first thing is this. The first thing I always like to say is, give me an example of one of the reasons why you shout and you punish. Just give me one reason, Mrs. Obama. Just give me one reason. Just give me one reason or two reasons or something that you you want or you wanted them to do and they didn't do. Yes, Tell other me. parents Tell can me. jump in as well. Let's not be quiet. We have many things that trigger us to shout. Yes. Aha, getting ready, getting ready to school. <laughs> getting ready to school. Exactly. Getting ready to school. Now, how old are your kids? How old are your kids? How old are your kids?
Okay, so let, let me let me let me say something now. Um, eleven and fourteen. Thank you very much. Your kids are trying to create a certain mindset that you must, you know, in the in the army. I used to be in the I used to be in the army. Um, and they would say yeah. that mind, yeah, that thing you're trying to do, and eh, will 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 deal with you so that that thing doesn't go. Do you understand? Now. In every in homes the way you you know let me there's there's something called the daddy's voice for example there's something called the daddy's voice and if you remember I said something in every home there must be instruction and there must be teaching there must be instruction instruction from the father teaching from the mother now see that instruction that instruction is very fair daddy doesn't need to shout you know so there's, there's, sometimes my wife my wife tells me something my wife tells me. Um, Daddy, can you can you talk to can you can you learn your boys on this thing? Now you see something because at that time there is a need for the father's voice. There's a need for the father's voice. Daddy doesn't need to shout. Daddy just needs to speak. Mm -hmm. That thing will be that thing. Eh, they will align. I'm telling you. I sometimes I just feel that um, um, even my even my wife. Sometimes I, I tell her, don't worry, just relax. And I just call, I just, I just read, I just call. I don't need to shout. Me, I, you know, even without shouting, said my 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 children know, even without speaking, my children know that I can be very, very firm. So when I say everybody stand to sleep now, everybody goes to sleep. No need for long, no need for shouting. I yeah, yeah, mm -mm, there's no need. So sometimes that instruction is needed. There are no instructions. There are no structure. In, you don't have structures in the house. If there is structure, I'm telling you, in that, in that room, go and put alarm. Put alarm with your hand. Your hands cannot reach. Because while you're doing something, sometimes, eh, sometimes, sometimes, you want to, you, you let your, I don't know if top fly what you do, what you do to children when they are, when they are late, when they are late, when they are late well, school. Is it, is there anything, what, do you, what, do you, what do you do to kids when they are late? The, what is the case when they are late? Do you give them you may, maybe they, there's this actually, portion that they can they should exactly, cut or they, they stay at the gate side, they kneel, they pick up pieces of papers, provided fantastic. they and, don't have a, a valid reason from the parents. Valid right, reason for being late. For exa example, that person that wants to be late, he needs sometimes he needs to even test the consequences of being late. And when he gets home, he says to himself, I'm not going to be late, I'm going to. Because the thing is, when he feels that nothing can happen where there are no consequences. It's not, it's not the beating on. You know? Do you understand? It's not when that consequence in top flight, when, when top flight, you know, gives that consequence, when they sleep, they will, they will go home, they will go to school on time. Do you understand? Because when there's structure at home, when there are teachings at home, when there's um, structure in school, when there are also consequences for actions in school and that top flight stays with their values and they don't condone some things. Trust me, your child will wake up early. Your child will wake up because if you shout, if you shout, you'll keep shouting because your child will say, it is only shout that mommy will shout. I want to sleep. So it means that if they wake up late, let them sleep early. Now, because they are also teenagers. Sometimes they have phones. I've, I've, I've asked children questions and, you know, they are they are awake by 12, by 1, and they are going to school the next day. My question is, who gave them the phones? Who bought the phones for them? Who did? Mm. We are the ones. We, we. They stay up late chatting with people. Who bought those things for them? We did. We did. We did. We, we are the ones that have created their minds the way they are now, that sometimes they now begin to say to themselves that, look, I think there is space for me to do this thing. And they do it and they make you upset. So put down the structure, put down the instruction, put down the consequence. See, they will stand up and do what is right. Now, I, I, I know that teenagers can be funny sometimes, but you see something, your teenager can be the one that will do the right thing. Oh, guys, can you iron your uniforms on Sunday or on Saturday before Monday? On Monday, can there be an alarm or something like that that wakes everybody up 
and get them ready before school, uh, get them ready and they're in school by so so and so. Once daddy says, look, everybody must be in school by 5 45, they will, they, will, they will stand up. They will stand up. Trust me. It's not ye yelling. If you, if you shout, if you just connect with them, just connect. Once you connect, once you connect, they will do the things that they need to do. We just need to connect. That's just it. Thank you so much. I think that okay. captions it. Uh, dear parents, if, well, we will be um, transitioning now because our time is really fast. We want to really appreciate uh, Ms. Okusele for all he has shared with us, uh, the tips and strategies. And of course, that aspect of structure, I hope we understand what he means. That is to say, when you give an instruction and you give the consequence, and thirdly, you follow through on it. So uh, for example, if you tell the child that, it, that's why it's not good to just you know, make threats unnecessarily, because the child sometimes will push the boundary and want to see if you will really follow through on it. And if you don't, that creates a, a, an opportunity for them to feel that, okay, things don't really count as such. So please, let's go. Um, we are going to have more forums like this. I want to really appreciate all our awesome parents that have stayed with us from the beginning of the session up until this time. And I also want to say that uh, this forum has been opened for our great parents so that we can be able to partner better as a school with you all. We know that you are doing your best as, um, but as, you, as you can, as the best you can. And so we are looking for ways that we can grow um, in our skills. So this platform, the online meetings will continue. Now we have an um, uh, um, Uncle Sele, but subsequently it might just be between us. I hope that's a good idea. So we can talk about how we can and remember the rules. For those of us that just joined um, when the session had already started, we had our very first rules section. So, and I'm so happy that everyone kept to them um, as well. So, Ankusele, I know that you have another appointment by 8 o'clock. You informed us already. Um, yes. Thank you. So, 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 much. This, so this, this is me. Um, you can follow me on the Ankusele. Um, this is my number. You can send me a message on WhatsApp. And this is my email. Um, so this is this is this is uh, these are my Instagram handles. Um, this is on Kusele, on Kusele Foundation, and this is Trees and Pillars Values Academy. So you can um, you can reach out to me on, on any of this. Just, uh, okay. Um. So thank you so much, sir. Before we go, dear parents, I remember I don't know if I said it out loud that we have some free resources we'll be sharing basically um, some of his products for you to be able to pass this information easily to children. We have the A to Z of values song. So I will play it here on this platform. And then of course we'll put it on the, on the parents' platforms as well. So it's a very lovely song that they can sing and dance to. And even in school, when we resume, we're going to be doing that as well. So I will play it shortly. But for those of us that joined in a bit later, I would just like to say in one or two minutes, something I said at the beginning, that the reason we are doing this now, we are trying to really partner, my kids are here, that we are, the reason we are trying to really partner with our parents is so that we can all grow, we can all grow together. So let me play the A to Z of values for us, please. So, sorry, I, I hope I'm free to leave, right? Um, I, I, I can leave, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you okay. so much. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Sorry, I, I have another meeting for 8 o'clock, so I have to join that meeting now. And of course, All right. I thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, then. All right. Bye.
Can we hear the song? Mommy. Hi friends, uh, do you ever feel so angry that you want an to awesome explode? Time with you all, do you ever feel annoyed, irritated, mad, or furious? Anger is a very common and normal emotion and develop everyone experiences. Uncontrolled anger Mommy! can get you into Mommy! lots of trouble I'm sorry, and can my cause children harm to your health and to your relationships. Guess me. It can cause so you to say and do things you would again. never do if you were calm and in control. Please let's make sure we get some rest it is important to because tomorrow is a Monday. Today, you will learn about five different Thank types you. of coping skills to help you control your angry emotions. Coping skills are things you can do to calm your brain and body and think more clearly when your temper rises. Before turning to coping skills, it can be helpful to notice warning signs in your body that let you know you are feeling angry. Examples of warning signs include heavy breathing, racing heartbeat, feeling hot, clenching your fist or jaw, shaking or tightness in your chest. They also might include actions such as raising your voice, arguing, yelling, refusing to talk, threatening others, or pacing back and forth. These symptoms can be helpful warning signs to let you know that you need to stop and calm down. Here are five different types of coping skills that can help you better manage your anger. Number one, relaxation skills. Relaxation skills help to relax your brain and body. These might include tensing and relaxing your muscles, spending time in nature, taking a nap, doing a five-minute meditation, 
grounding exercises, or practicing deep breathing techniques. Try the following deep breathing techniques for two to three minutes or until you feel calm. Belly breathing. Breathe deep through your nose, feeling your belly expand. Hold your breath for a couple seconds, then breathe long and slow out your mouth, feeling your belly return to its resting position. Square breathing. Breathe in your nose for four seconds, hold your breath for four seconds, breathe out your mouth for four seconds, Rest for four seconds. Trace the shape of a square in the air as you do your breathing. Triangle breathing. Breathe in your nose for three seconds. Hold your breath for three seconds. Breathe out your mouth for three seconds. Number two, distraction skills. Distraction skills help get your mind off the angry situation. Practice creative outlets such as hobbies, art, or writing in a journal. Other healthy distractions might include counting from one to 100, listening to music, watching a movie, or playing with a pet. Number three, movement or physical release. Sometimes anger can cause you to get physically aggressive, which can result in harm to yourself or others. It is important to practice healthy movement activities to release your anger in a productive way. This might include walking away from the angry situation, running, biking, swimming, martial arts, or exercises in your bedroom, such as push-ups, sit-ups, wall sits, planks, or stretching. Number four, thinking skills. Thinking skills help you notice negative thoughts that trigger your anger and then change these thoughts to something more helpful and encouraging. For example, maybe you're thinking about how unfair it is that you have to do your homework before you can watch TV or how rude it is that your friend brags after beating you at a board game. Instead of letting these thoughts take over, you can change your thoughts by telling yourself, relax, it's okay, time out, I'm taking a walk, or I'm letting this one go, it's not worth getting angry about. It is important to remember that your thoughts can affect your feelings and your actions. So, if you change your thoughts, then you can change the way you feel and how you act. Number five, communication skills. It can be helpful to use your words to express how you feel. Tell the other person how they made you feel, but don't blame, judge, or criticize. Use I statements such as, I feel mad when you brag about winning because it seems like you don't care about my feelings. You can also use communication skills by asking for help or talking to a supportive person such as a friend, parent, teacher, or counselor. You may not be able to completely get rid of your angry feelings, but coping skills can help you reduce your anger to a more manageable level. An anger thermometer can be a useful visual tool to help you manage your anger. First, you can identify your level of anger from annoyed to enraged. Then you can move across to the corresponding coping skills and practice one or more coping skills to help you control your angry emotions. If one coping skill does not work, then move on to another until you find the combination of coping skills that help you to feel calm and under control. It's okay to feel angry, but what's important is that you find healthy ways to manage your anger. The next time you feel your angry emotions rising, Stop and remind yourself to practice a coping strategy from one of the following categories. Relaxation skills, distraction skills, movement skills, thinking skills, or communication skills. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. For more social, emotional, and mental health resources for kids and teens, please visit www.mentalhealthcenterkids.com. Thanks for watching! Failure seemed familiar No one thought that I would ever come this far When everything was telling me that it was over Still there was a fire burning in my heart There were days I felt like I was at my lowest I pushed so hard I couldn't see beyond the pain I never knew I made it high enough to notice I'm getting closer, stronger than I've ever i
Music on tunesjam.com 